<laughs> it ain't easy going through life, is it? Come here, this Yorkshire couple come in and go and showcase cinema like they're walking in like that. And the old fellow looks down, there's a bundle of fifty pound notes on the floor. He said to his wife, Look at that money, pick it up, put your bag down. So she's going out and picks it. Right, what shall I do? He said, Keep it safe while we come out, do what you want, stick it down your knickers, whatever. <laughs> so they're coming out and he says to her, uh, Give us that money. She went, Oh, oh, it's gone. He said, How do you mean it's gone? She said, it must have been that fella that was sat next to me. <laughs> I said, what did you let him do that for? She said, well, I didn't know he was a thief, did I? <laughs> so can you imagine? So can you imagine? So this fella's driving the top of the range Mercedes down this road. He hits, hits that curb over the double white lines, hit that curb, he goes over a roundabout through a blooming red, red lights and eventually the police stop him this fella gets out he can't stand up the copper said um, have you been drinking sir he said yes constable he says uh, as a matter of fact I've spent the evening at the lodge who we winked the copper said no problem they drove his car home put it in the garage took him to the front door propped him up put the keys in his pocket and the policeman said be a bit more careful in future sir it might not be us who stop you next time alright he said by the way which, which lodge do you go to he said uh, yeah it says he said <laughs> This fellow goes in a pub one morning, there's only the landlord, sat there, he said, <laughs> Morning, landlord, he said, uh, yeah, he said, what do you want? He said, could I have a, a bunch of pitter and a laugh of harga, please? And he said, you are? He said, a bunch of pitter and a laugh of harga. He said, it's right, be funny, lad. He said, why? He said, you mean a pint of bitter and a half of lager? He said, I'll just ask you twice. Are you going to see now, or what? He said, I should see now your head off your shoulders. You said a bunch of pitter and a laugh of harga. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I've done it again. I don't know what's going wrong with my head this morning. I'm getting everything muddled up. He said, I, I, I wasn't trying to be offensive. I'm sorry. Landlord said, oh, what am I shouting at you for? He said, I do that all the time myself. He said, do you? Oof, I did a beauty this morning. He said, I come down in the pub for my breakfast and the wife stood there and I thought, ooh, I'll have bacon, egg and sausage. That's all I meant to say to the wife, I'll have bacon, egg and sausage. And instead I said to her, do you know, you've ruined my life, you big fat ugly bastard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know. You've been a lovely crowd. And can, can I be a bit honest with you now? I'm, I'm getting on my own nerves now a bit. And uh, <laughs> keep supporting these wonderful theatres. We'll keep breathing. That's your first job, isn't it? I mean, bad breath is better than no bleeding breath, isn't it? I'm, uh, I'm waffling a bit, aren't you? know, I've never got this far before. And, uh, <laughs> Do you know the worst crowd I've ever had, right? Now, I got stuck in a situation a few years ago, right? And uh, it put me in Blackpool, which is part of our northern heritage. I can remember going to Blackpool when I was a kid with my granddad. And he took me to see a woman on Central Pier Gypsy, Pitchy Plonk, right? And uh, <laughs> she told me when I was nine years old, she said, until you are 40, you will be very poor and very unhappy. What said and then what? She said, well, you'll have got used to it by then, young man. <laughs> So I get this booking in Blackpool at the Imperial Hotel, right, about four years ago, during the last Conservative government conference, right? Now, I know nothing about politics, uh, comrades, and, uh... <laughs> no, but can you imagine this for a dilemma here, right? Now, they played me on because they had a band, right? And, of course, I come on to the music like this when they played me on like that, and... Because I, I do my own choreography. Come on, like that. <laughs> I was full of confidence in, uh, Carlsberg, and, um... <laughs> I went like that, I hit the centre spot like that, and I nearly collapsed when I saw the audience. They were all the top Tories in evening dress, looking at me. Cabinet ministers, bloody curb crawlers. They were... <laughs> <laughs> the problem was, ladies and gents, the big problem was, right, see... They were dining when I was on, and they were all... It wasn't food like we eat, it was all a la chart menu, you know. <laughs> Leg of liver, and, um... <laughs> yeah, corn on your cobs and all that. <laughs> These were posh people, you know, they're the sort that have the big issue delivered, you know, they're, um... <laughs> I mean, they were really posh. My mate took a young lady home and he caught lobsters. <laughs> we're talking posh, aren't we, I mean... <laughs> have you ever seen anybody fart in a hanky? Right. <laughs> hey? 
But they made a giant mistake with me, right? They give me free beer all night. Could you imagine giving a Yorkshire man free beer, eh? I was nearly in a coma by midnight, right? And, uh, <laughs> I was drinking like a two-headed committee man on a brewery trip, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but being a Yorkshire man, I knew when I'd had enough to drink, right? They'd, they'd shut the bar, you see. And um, <laughs> I stood up to go to bed and my teeth were floating, right? I couldn't... <laughs> Bloody, my legs won't go off, do they, like that, you know? I look like an MFI wardrobe. Oh, I... <laughs> uh, I managed to acquire some forward motion from whence I know not now, but anyway. <laughs> my legs have gone completely. I was walking like the world's first spine donor, you know? Like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I managed to get into the bedroom, right? Oh, and could I sleep when I hit that sack? Not a flipping wink. They put a couple in the next room to me, and ladies and jerks, if I never... <laughs> this couple, not... Sh oh, noise. Talk about a pig on stilts. You have never... <laughs> not shouting, fighting. Oh, no. Bonky, bonky, these two. <laughs> nucky, nucky, push, push. And, um... <laughs> Posh fellas giving it... Geronimo! You know? <laughs> And I'm lying wide awake thinking, up with this, I cannot put, you know. <laughs> All night, every ten minutes, this posh woman shouted, I'm arriving. <laughs> uh, well, I'm stood on the bed by now with my ear against the wall, right? And uh, <laughs> I felt like applauding these two, I did. I was, I was going to clap, but it's hard to clap with one hand, isn't it? And, uh, <laughs> I weren't really, no. That's nasty habit, that, isn't it? But very, very popular, I'll tell you what. If God hadn't meant you to do it, he'd have made your arms shorter, wouldn't you? Listen. <laughs> Did you know it takes men with glasses on longer to do that? And, uh, well, they keep having to let go and go. I knew a lad that did that all the time. I mean, he, he was a real polisher, this fella. And, uh, <laughs> and do you know, his self-winding watch was up to September 2002. <laughs> and I'm not lying, look, it's still going there. Look. <laughs> this woman goes in a, a tattoo parlour, this young lady, she said, wonder if you could do me a favour. I'm getting married on Saturday, she said, I want to surprise my husband, he's really into tattoos, and I want you to tattoo a little butterfly in each cheek of my bottom as a surprise. He said, butterflies? I wouldn't even attempt them. The most difficult thing ever, and very difficult to cover up if they go wrong. I'll do you two bees. She said, I want to butterflies. She said, well, I, I'm a world expert on bees. I'll do you bees, but I won't do butterflies. Anyway, she agrees. She has the two bees done. On the wedding night, she comes out of the bathroom, she goes like this to me. she says, here, what do you think of this then? He said, who the hell's Bob? <laughs> 